Welcome back. In this video, I want to show you a cool way that you can make your executable seem and look like another file. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mask our shell.txe that we created from the previous video to look like a car image. And what you will need for this is you're going to need a car image or basically it doesn't even have to be an image or a car. It can be any file type that you want. If you want to create it to be a PDF file, you can. If you want to create it to be a JPEG file, you can. Just follow along and the process of doing that is the same for every file type. So two things you're going to need. A file that you want your executable to look like and the executable itself. So this is the same payload from the previous video, which is a regular Windows Meterpreter shell. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it to the desktop real quick. And once you got these two files on your desktop, you are ready to go. Now, the first thing that we must do is we must make an icon file from this PNG file. And how can we do that? Well, we can just open the Google Chrome or any search engine and type PNG to ICO. You can navigate to the first link in case you chose a PNG file and it will lead you to this convertico.com where it allows us to simply just upload our PNG image and it will create an icon file with that image. So I'm going to lower the screen. Then as it says right here, drop your PNG files. I will drop it right here. It will take a few seconds and right here our file should appear once it's done. Here it is. We can download it by pressing this arrow and it will download the car.ico file for us. So I'm going to show it in folder, paste it on my desktop and now we're good to go. We got the car.png which is the image. We got this car.ico which we're going to use to make our executable have this icon right here. And we're going to merge it with this PNG image in order for once the target executes our program, it also opens this image. Let me show you how it would look like. So all you want to do, you want to select these two files, right click on them and click add to archive. Click on this. Right here there are a few settings that we must set. First, archive format should be zip. Right here you want to check create SFX archive. And here you can name your file whatever you want. The only bad thing about this is that it will have an exe extension. But most of the people don't have extensions enabled on their Windows system, so this will not present that big of a problem. Okay, so let's go right here and call it car.exe. Then I want to go to the advanced tab and click right here on SFX options. This will open this small window and we want to go through each tab and set the settings accordingly. In the update tab, you want to click extract and update files. And in the overwrite mode, you want to overwrite all files. Then if I go to text and icon tab, here we want to click on this load SFX icon from the file, click on browse, find the ICO file that you just created. In my case, it is on my desktop, so I'm going to select it. Once you do that, you can move on to the next tab. So in the license tab, there is nothing that we want to set. Here also, there is nothing that we want to set. If I go to the advanced, nothing in modes, we want to click on hide all and unpack to a temporary folder. After it, in the setup, we want to write both of our file names. So in the run after extraction, we want to type right here shell.exe. Just make sure you type the file's name right here correctly. So shell.txe is our executable and car.png is our image. Okay, good. Under the general, nothing here to do. So once you set all of those options, you can click on OK and you can click right here on OK as well. And here it is. We got car.txe on our desktop. It has the icon of this image and once we go and execute it, it should also open this image. But in the background, it should also run our shell.exe. Let's test it out. But first, we must set up our listener. So open terminal, run MSF console. Let's set up our listener. So multi handler, set payload to be regular Windows meterpreter, reverse DCP, lhost 
will be the IP address on my Cal Linux machine and L port, if I remember correctly, was 5555. Now I can run this. This will start the listener and if I go to my desktop and execute this file, well, for some reason, it seems to have only opened this meterpreter shell and it didn't open the car image. And this is something that happens sometimes. So we can try to change some of the settings in order to make this work, but in this case, it was just a late opening. So here is the image it opened right now. For some reason that took a few seconds. So let's just run it once again, just to see whether it will open faster right now. So I will run the listener once again and open car.exe. Hmm, it still seems to take some time, even though our meterpreter shell is open. So what we can do instead of this is we can first of all exit this shell, close this image that opened 10 seconds after we executed, and we can start the MSF console again, delete this file, and we're going to change one setting, which will hopefully make our file execute faster. So let's go once again, zip, here we want to name the file to be car.exe under the advanced SFX options. And here under the setup is something that we want to change. So last time we specified the shell.exe first, right now we're going to specify car.png first. And under it, I'm going to specify shell.exe. Then I'm going to click right here, hide all. In the general, nothing. In the update, extract and update files overwrite all files, text and icon, let's select our icon file. In the license and module there is nothing, so let's just click on OK. It will create our file once again. Not sure why I closed MSF console when right now we are going to set up our listener again and multi-handler, meterpreter, set lhost, and the lport. We want to run it, run the file, and now it opens the image straight away. Okay, so just make sure that you specify the image name first, and then after it, you can specify the shell name. And here we also got the interpreter session opened. We can execute commands as usual, so our program works good. It has an icon of an image, it also opens an image. The only problem is this exe extension. And there are some of the ways that you can fix this and make it seem like it doesn't have an exe extension, but most of those ways automatically get detected by any antivirus out there. Okay, great. Now that we covered this, we are ready to finally get into the post exploitation section. And here we're going to go into details with the interpreter shell, what options it has, and what post exploitation modules we can run after hacking the target. See you in the next video.